I always look at Deborah as a big picture for a woman who just wants to sit there and sulk and say, man, I have nothing to do. Mm. But she rose up with energy. Mm. She rose up with understanding. Mm -hmm. But from just rising up with your name, you need to know why, what is the cause I'm rising up for? Yes. And uh, then when you're rising up for a cause, you mm. need to know who is the person, the right, talented or qualified person mm. for every task. Mm -hmm. Greetings, people of God. Praise the Lord. I'm so delighted to be with you once again. Coming all the way from Maxland Hotel, we are happy to bring you the Deborah Generation Show. I'm so excited for what the Lord has in store for all of us. Therefore, call that girlfriend, call that sister, call your mother, call every lady so that we can listen in, we can see, we can learn, we can redefine our position in this journey of womanhood. Karibuni sana. And therefore, just to pick up from where we left last episode, we were looking at the description of Deborah, and we saw that Deborah was one of the most influential women in the Bible times. And I took us through the, 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 the description of, of Deborah, as the Bible would tell us. And I just want us to, to just hear that bit again so that we can pick up from there as we move on. So this is what the description of Deborah is in my Bible. Deborah is a spirit-filled multi-talented woman. Deborah rose in the ancient Israel as a female judge whose multiple leadership functions demonstrate the possibility of any woman who will allow God's spirit to fill and form her life. She became a celebrated leader of political influence and authority while maintaining the grace and the dignity of womanhood. Deborah also acquired a reputation as a wise settler of disputes and as an, an arbitrator of justice, a counselor, a wife, a prophetess, and a deliverer in the times of war. Her success, mobilization of the Israelite uh, militia, demonstrated her leadership ability and spiritual insights. Under her leadership, the people witnessed God's providential assistance in the form of a massive storm and the defeat of Sisera's superior armed force. Deborah depicts the finest possibilities of a gifted, God-fearing woman who allows the Spirit of God to develop her full capacities to impact the world around her. Wow. Who say that you can only function in one space or in one uh, area? We can see what Deborah, Deborah demonstrates here. Deborah, Deborah demonstrates that you are able to fully Activate all your potential, your skills and talents in the spirit of excellence under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and be able to function and wear different hats and bring out the glory that God deserves from the potential that he has instilled in all of us. And therefore, your place is not just being a wife. Your place is just not is, is not only in being a mother. Your place is not only in being a house help. Your place is not only in functioning in one space. You are gifted, so much gifted with so many talents. And therefore, there was a reason that God has gifted you with all those talents. 
And the reason is to function in them and to bring out the glory that deserves to go back to God. And that is why we are here. We are going to see the different lights or the different aspects and the different giftings that Deborah had so that we can inspire you to also activate the rest of the gifting that you have to be able to function and to bring out the best that the world is yet to see. And therefore, again, I would love to welcome my friend, the woman of God, Pastor Miriam. Welcome, Pastor. Thank you. How have you been? Well, I've been well. Mm -hmm. and, um, running up and down. Yes. With the schedules of life. Yes. I glorify God for this far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and being well and healthy is just another miracle I'm celebrating mm -hmm. that the Lord has done for me. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm. Karibu sana. Mm. And uh, I'm looking forward to the great conversations that we shall be having in this platform. Mm -hmm. And and just to, to, to start a foundation, to pick up uh, from the base, eh? mm -hmm. I just want us to demystify or to, 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 to bring out who Deborah is. Who is well, Deborah? Deborah, one, as you have you've already told us, was a wife, was a judge, was a prophetess. And uh, you remember last time we said that she has two, three classifications yes. of, in life. That she is able to manage a home. Then when she leaves home, she goes and listens to the Lord and brings the message back to her people. And then I almost want to think that she saw need or she saw a gap and decided I'm going to sit in because Israel needs someone who can uprightly bring out judgments. And so she placed herself in a formal position to be a judge in Israel at a time when there was war and there was confusion and there was a lot of anomalies there were issues of fear, and uh, she decided to put in or put on a, a shoe that would help Israel become. And the Bible says that she rose up as a mother in Israel. And we very well know that a mother is like the life bearer, is like the carrier of the next generation. And so she brought herself out and said, I'm going to be used by God not just in my family, not just as a prophetess or a preacher, but I'm going to take up a position in the government that will help change the way things run out here. And um, the reason why we are looking at Deborah is because there are other characters in the Bible of women, even prophets. But this one took up roles, not just one. As we will continue to see as we demystify, we will see that apart from being a woman, a wife of Rapidoth, as the Bible says, it's very clear, it even names the husband. That is to mean she must have been responsible. You don't want to start saying I'm Mrs. Kangangi, yet Kangangi doesn't even want to hear about you mm. because of your life. Mm. And so we see that she must have but, um, moved up, you know, she must have shown exemplary results mm -hmm. in, all, in all areas of performance. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would want to think, us to think about Deborah, the name, Deborah, the name. And, uh, you know, there is something in a name. Like for us in Kenya and the people of Mount Kenya region, every region in Kenya, mm -hmm. we have a way we name our children yes. to bring out meaning. Yes. or to show when they were born or mm -hmm. why were they born. Mm -hmm. And so Deborah just means be, yes. you know, be the yes. one that makes honey. Mm. And uh, I, we were looking with my friend another day and we were saying, if she's a bee, and we know the colonies, the bees, you yes. know, and uh, we were reasoning and seeing that the, the she bee or the female bee is the one that produces. Yes. And so that's an element or an aspect of production 
that Deborah is not just a Deborah that is a judge that just sits and tells mm. people, this is what you're going to do. Yes. It shows she's out there working. Yes. And her working means at some point when she saw the need to, to arouse the army to fight, mm -hmm. she sent out for the army commander mm. and said, guy, you cannot just sit there. Mm -hmm. And the guy was like, oh, sulking maybe, mm -hmm. because they had been beaten, beaten, beaten. Yes. And it was like, now it's time for us to surrender. Mm. You know, like right now we are able to relate to what war is yes. because of the war in Ukraine. Yes. And uh, we can be able now to see a real picture. Mm -hmm. And um, I, th I, I always look at Deborah as a big picture for a woman who just wants to sit there and sulk and say, man, I have nothing to do. Mm. But she rose up with energy. Mm. She rose up with understanding. Mm -hmm. Because we also have to ask our women, apart from just rising up, with your name, you need to know why, what is the cause I'm rising up for? Yes. And uh, then when you're rising up for a cause, you need to know who is the person, the right talented or qualified person mm. for every task. Mm -hmm. And that tells you Deborah was learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not ruling out uh, any woman in this. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is she must have added value to her life. Yes. She must have uh, sharpened and combed and dressed up and made up mm -hmm. herself yes. to be able to become relevant in the time. Yes. She had to be relevant. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at our nation, Kenya, you remember I mentioned that we have a woman or a female Chief Justice yes. at the moment. Yes. And I say this is going to really help us mm -hmm. come home with this message. Mm. And uh, you know, these positions, sometimes you want to sit in them, but they ask you for your credentials. Yes. That is to mean you have to have the substance that is being looked for. So apart from Deborah just sitting in the home and mm. cooking ugali and fish for the husband or Mudokoi and Mukimo, she must have been working towards being a relevant figure mm -hmm. in the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I like what you're saying because mm -hmm. uh, most women for a long time mm -hmm. have been in that position of just sitting and, and, and settling. Mm -hmm. Uh, not acquiring wisdom, not acquiring uh, knowledge, not acquiring skills, and yet they sit in that position to complain, I am not able to do this, I am not able to do that. But we can see clearly that God has called out us to be productive. And for us to be productive, that means you have to add value. Yeah. To yourself. Mm -hmm. Even the word of God in Luke 2.52 says, mm -hmm. And Jesus grew in wisdom, mm -hmm. in stature, mm -hmm. and in favor with men mm -hmm. and with God. Yes. That means he went to add value to himself so that he's able to give value to the people that he was ministering to. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are calling to you, woman. First of all, we have heard that for you to be good and to be productive out there, you need to add value to yourself so that you are able to give value to people that you care for, even at home, even in your society, in your community. And therefore, arise. You're not somebody who should just settle for, for making breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and taking care of your children, and bathing them, and clothing them, and ironing it. You have greater value inside of you. Therefore, polish it and bring it out there so that you can be impactful into this generation. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I love the character. I've really spent time to just study this woman, mm -hmm. uh, Deborah. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are very, very, very strong facts about, about Deborah mm -hmm. that uh, uh, comes out even from her own name, the meaning of her name, mm -hmm. and her being the queen bee, mm -hmm. we can see the, the, the productivity in her. We can see the leadership in her. We can see the wisdom in her because the queen bee, for her to be able to provide, uh, she has to be, I imagine this queen bee has to be very wise to be, to be able to, to know which is the right pollen? How, mm -hmm. uh, when do we 
collect, collect the pollen mm -hmm. and how do we get the nectar, you know, the, the process in mm -hmm. uh, through which they are going to produce and mm -hmm. to provide for their young ones and for their families. Please take us through what, what are these facts that we need to identify with as a woman today as we look at Deborah. As we have already mentioned, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just thinking about the cultural setting mm -hmm. we found ourselves in, especially in Africa, mm -hmm. where women, <laughs> you know, we, we, we looked at it like the boy child mm -hmm. initially, mm -hmm. until someplace somewhere the ball was turned over. And we started also thinking about the girl mm -hmm. child, mm -hmm. and it's like, it became like a shadowing thing mm -hmm. until the boy child then found themselves mm -hmm. being sidelined. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, I think balls are changing and uh, the woman is understanding that she has space to operate in properly, just mm -hmm. like the boy child mm -hmm. or by side by side to strengthen the capacities in the boy child. Mm -hmm. And so, as we said, we have all provisions for education right now. And uh, apart from going to school formally, there are so many systems at exposure that a woman can get to. And let me put it this way. Even if you're just a housewife, mm -hmm. there's so much to learn about yes. things, the housekeeping. Mm -hmm. you, you can learn how to do fish differently. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to do fruits differently. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to, to mix dressing differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to do your hair differently and all those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. You can learn how to do different dishes for your children. Yes. You can learn how to change the setting of your table room and mm -hmm. anything else. And mm -hmm. just do some little small things to improve the way your house looks. Yes. So there is so much that one can learn. Mm -hmm. But we can also ask our women to look around and see pillars, learn from pillars, get into some group of a kind, work with teams that is locally available. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk here, someone will say, I don't have the finances. But there are those things you don't need a coin to do. Yes. Like uh, to cook sukuma wiki differently. Mm. Although the, the oil right now is growing <laughs> prices. You, 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 you can decide today I'm just going to cut, not put tomatoes. Yes. Those are things you may just have to creatively walk around mm -hmm. and see what you do differently. Mm. But as much as that is said, I am thinking of um, team playing. Team playing is one of the main things that is needed. Yes. Because Deborah was sitting somewhere under the palm of Debola, Deborah. Mm -hmm. And then she sat the location. The location helped her to be able to team play. Mm. You remember she was sitting, her office, I'll yes. call it the office, mm -hmm. was between Rama and Bethel, yes, yes. and that should give you a load of pages. Yes. Sitting between Rama and Bethel, mm. remember Rama is the home of Samuel. Yeah. Bethel is the house of God. Yes. So she has touched with the house of God, yes. and she has touched with the prophetic ministration yes. or anointing. Yes. She's able to get to know what did Samuel say mm. when he was around here, mm. and what is the voice of God mm. saying, mm. and that gave her a pat on her shoulder in her prophetic ministration. And apart from her prophetic ministration, I'm sure she was now able to connect with who is who, yes. having sat in between Rama mm -hmm. and Jerusalem, mm. or in and Bethel. And Bethel. Mm. And, uh, our positioning is very important yes. because women for a long time felt like they were only meant to be behind in the kitchens. Yes, yes. But we are asking every woman, regardless of your, form, of your, 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 your achievements in education mm. or in business, mm. please get out, discover who you are, mm. discover. And when I mean discover here, as I pronounce it, I mean, remove the veil on yourself. Mm. Stop covering yourself. Get mm. out, get into some exposed place, mm -hmm. be found in between Rama mm -hmm. and uh, Bethel, Bethel. Yes. a place where people can connect with you. Don't just sit out there and start 
wobbling and crying and thinking, oh, I'm meant to be nothing. Mm. In fact, none of us, regardless of our formation, whether mm. physical or emotional, mm. whatever, is meant to just be behind there. Mm -hmm. We all have a place. We all have a place. Mm -hmm. The only good thing we can do is discover ourselves yes. mm -hmm. and expose you who you are mm -hmm. and then let other people work with you mm -hmm. because that's exactly what Deborah did mm -hmm. when she's calling for Barak. Mm -hmm. She's exposing herself and saying, it's me who is calling you. Mm. And uh, you know by now, the position she has set for herself mm. is able even to market her. Mm. And when she speaks, everybody is able to, mm -hmm. to come and say, mm -hmm. Madam, what are you saying? Yeah, and I tell women, it's not about the eloquence of your grammar. Mm. No, it's mm. not about uh, how many schools you have been to. Mm. No, it's about you making a deliberate move mm. or yes move or action mm -hmm. to say i i am around mm. yeah i'm around mm. i also have something to give mm. yes and i love the fact that uh, we have said uh, we have added on and to you acquiring the wisdom and acquiring the value so mm. that you can give value, mm. we are also saying that position yourself mm -hmm. in the right place. And mm. the right place here we are talking about is in God. Yeah. You, are you, are, are you pos have you positioned yourself mm -hmm. under the leadership of God, mm -hmm. under a prophetic uh, 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 leadership mm. or, uh, or covering? Mm -hmm. So you need to position yourself in God. Yeah. And God appoints his people mm. who speaks over you. Yeah. For example, in church, mm. are you planted in a church? Mm. Are you planted in a community that honor God, that mm. that 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 uh, have put God as their anchor, have put God as their driver in all that they do? Because you need to be planted in God for you to bring out the best the best qualities, the best uh, talents, the best version of you can only be found in God. And therefore we are saying you have all the possibilities they are in front of you. You have all the opportunities they are in front of you. But where have you located yourself? Mm -hmm. Plant yourself in God so that God can bring out the best version in you. As Jesus did, uh, he grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and with men. And therefore, woman, arise and desire to grow in these things, to grow in wisdom, to grow in stature, and to grow in favor with God and with men. And that way, you will be able to be productive and give value, a godly value to your home, to your companies, to your friends, to your society. And every life that comes in contact with you, you will be the Deborah of this generation. Mm -hmm. As Thank we conclude so today, much. and we look forward to we having have looked more at discussion Deborah around this and to seeing just how, the name. how we can become we have looked at all, her credentials. All, all we have everything at her that position God has put in us. And therefore, because as you meditate and as you look over this, what it takes look to at become that woman. Who are you? Whatever your name is, who are you called by? Who are you in God? And what has God put inside of you? Then you need to look at what is it that you have inside of you as value addition that you can impact, you can stand in to impact your generation, to impact your society, to impact the people around you. Look at what are the value additions that you can add value to people, that you can be at the front to say, I have something I can add to this. I have a contribution towards this. Make a day-to-day -day contribution towards making life and this world a better place. You as a woman have a responsibility to do that. Then check where are you positioned? Where is your place in God? You can only be functional, 100% in excellent when you are positioned in God. And therefore, your place at every time, every day, first and foremost, 
where you draw insights and foresights. It's in the place of the word of God. It's in the place of prayer. It's where God is. Because God, first and foremost, is interested in your position, your posture. Where is your heart at? Because out of your heart, out of the fullness of your heart, comes out living waters. And therefore, if you are grounded in God, if you are in position in the right place where God is, you are able to draw in wisdom from the Heavenly Father so that you can bring out the best in yourself and the best out of everyone that you come in touch with. And therefore, as we conclude, next time we will be looking at the leadership skills of Deborah and how those skills, we can, how we can draw lessons from the leader that she was. She was a courageous leader. She was a wise leader. She stood true to the cause. And therefore, we need women to arise who will speak in confidence, who will speak in courage, and who will stand true to the cause. And the cause must be grounded in God. And therefore, save the date on 4th of May as we look at the next episode and the leadership skills of Deborah. As we look into her courageousness, we look into her poise and posture, how she stood out true to the course and how she was wise even in, in, her, in her leadership skills. So don't miss out. Make sure you have called that girlfriend. Make sure you have called that sister. Uh, you know, just have a gathering. We shall have a gathering to just grow in this wisdom and to see how best we can learn to become the greatest leaders of today. Thank you.